bulls, lions, eagles, peacocks, roses. Well, there are roses. Um, let me think. There aren't any orcas. Hmm. What other ones were there? Well, they have leopards, but that's not one of the gill, or that's not one of the uh, Magic Knight squads. Hmm. Mantises. There are bugs, mantises. Um. Oh. Well, I guess I'm doing a comparison list between the animals that I will see tomorrow when I go to the zoo with my mom and sister and her kids and additional friends of those kids and uh, the uh, different squads in uh, <laughs> Black Clover. Um, I think I got most of them. Um, bunny. Um, there are the, the Azure Deer. Um, they don't really have deer there, but they have like antelope and stuff like that at the zoo. Um, <laughs> uh, so, time for another Black Clover Siblings Day video. Um, today is going to be Sisters Day. So, I've got no Noel here. Um, I don't know why I keep going out of focus. I'm sorry if it keeps doing that. Um, so, um, I already did brothers, which means I've touched on a couple of these uh, sisters here because a lot of these are sister brothers combo. There should really only be like one or two new ones here. Um, but this is kind of more like the sisters aspect um, in that regard. So, uh, and I'll be seeing my sister tomorrow, so that'll be appropriate. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, first up, we have Noel and Nebra Silva, who are, of course, their sisters to each other, but they are also, you know, sisters to Nozel and Solid Silva. Okay, I get, it's like, we have a running theme here. We have Nozel, we have Nebra, we have Noel, and then there's Solid, and I'm like, Nolid isn't a word, <laughs> but then again, neither is, like, Nebra, so I don't know. Um... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. They, they was just like, Asier was like, no, nah, I don't want this one to have an end name. Uh, <laughs> well, name is solid. It's fine. Um, but, um, so, and I've touched on, uh, this sibling set a lot, uh, mostly in some of the other Silva family videos I have done, but in this one, uh, in the brothers one, of course, um, specifically I touched on this sibling set, but in this regard, you know, Noelle, as is like the common theme throughout the whole series with her. She does not have a good relationship with any of her siblings in the beginning. And at this point in time in the story, she has at least, or at least, you know, this point in time being when I'm recording this in comparison to when we have however many chapters left of the manga. Um, she has, you know, her, her relationship with Nozelle has definitely vastly improved. And she's definitely gotten the chances to stand up to Nebra and to Solid specifically because he was the one that definitely was like a lot worse than Nebra. Yes, Nebra would pick on her and was very, um, you know, very condescending to her and all of that horrible stuff and everything. But no, but Solid was the main one who, you know, he would rip her toys apart. He would do, um, you know, shouting at her so much more. Nozelle kind of more just, you know, ignored her and, you know, looked at her, you know, with pity because, like, he looked at her the way that he, you know, because she looked so much like their mother. And that was where that came from for Nozelle. Um, I, you know, there's, there's various points throughout the series now where, like, Noelle has had these encounters with her siblings. You know, in the beginning, we see her with the little encounter with no Nozelle when he's like, you know, I could have gotten you into whatever squad you wanted and yet she goes to the Black Bulls. And then later on, we see her get to interact with all three of her siblings because she is the lone one who is not in the Silver Eagles, where Nozelle is the captain, and where Nebra and Solid are uh, current members of the Silver Eagles. Um, I think we have eagles at the zoo. Um, 
<laughs> they don't. We don't have bulls at the zoo. We have peacocks that wander around the zoo, but we don't have any bulls at the zoo. We've got elephants and we've got hippos and we've got giraffes, but none of those are animals that were part of this group. We have lions. I will most likely see lions. Um, <laughs> that's the next sibling set I'll be talking about, and peacocks will come up later. Um, <laughs> but so we don't really you know noel gets to have like that moment there where like Asta gets to see the way that she's treated by her siblings and then he starts trying to stand up for her and then of course just throughout the story we see noel you know build her own power and build her own backbone and her own self-confidence and everything like that and she's able to you know use that to help her be able to stand up to her siblings and then of course we get the moment um during the uh, the magic nights um you know tournament where you know she and where her team fights against solid's team and she wipes the freaking floor with him which i love um where she does that and then he like has to you know acquiesce and then later on it's you know she saves both no uh nebra and solid um and i think uh, ne uh nozelle at the same point in time when she goes into her valkyrie dress form for the first time and of course her armor looks like their mother's armor which of course they recognize and they're just bewildered how like noelle who could barely control her magic is now able to do this and of course it's in their home which just adds to it where she went through so much and now of course currently noelle is again standing up protecting her siblings against their demon possessed paladin mother at the moment which we haven't cut back to that fight for a while i don't think we've cut back to that fight for a little while um if i remember correctly but she's currently doing that so we'll see how everything ends i'm kind of hoping that there's i mean like there's not really <laughs> there's not really a way of like fully like for like nozelle and, well nebra and solid to be able to fully apologize to noel no nozel has gotten better and he's been able to you know compliment her and everything like that but of course he was doing it to protect her and everything <sighs> um so we'll see where that where that sibling group ends up by the end of the story um next up we have the vermilion family we have Marileona Vermilion, and of course her two brothers are of course Fergolion and Leopold. Um, she is of course, she was the temporary commander of the Crimson Lion Kings, um, but she, you know, she was that temporary commander while Fergolion was, you know, in his, you know, coma, <laughs> healing until he woke up. Um, and of course, you know, we get these flashbacks where we see, you know, mostly for Golion and Marileona growing up together because Leopold's a bit younger than they are but like we see them growing up together and of course we know that Marileona had the you know the mentor mentee kind of relationship with Ossier and everything which you know then which isn't necessarily part of this but you know we know that there's that connection there and you know Marileona is of course this you know she is this very very powerful like wild woman who has just been out like in the wilderness training for like however many years and i can never remember whether or not her or for Golion or the older one um but like because the way she acts and because of how much stronger she seems to be than for Golion, she seems like she'd be the older one but i don't know i don't remember or you know for is the one that became the captain of the crimson lion kings which seems to be kind of a hereditary thing like with nozel taking over in um you know in the silver eagles but that's not a guaranteed in that case um that's not a guarantee that they'll you know they'll take over it doesn't mean that never or solid will take over of the silver eagles or anything like that or that for you know leopold will one day be the captain of the crimson lions it's not a requirement but there's a you know, similarity there um yeah kind of like i guess that's kind of like in bleach where like biakia takes over for his grandfather as the captain of squad six or eight i can't remember i'm sorry um but like so with you know with Marileona, and she does love her brothers very much but she is also like her and Fergolian kind of butt heads at various points in time and so but they they definitely love each other and currently she went like all fire magma <laughs> for fire magma mode um in her fight against the the demon paladin thing that she's currently fighting i don't remember who she's currently fighting but against that 
um, and like has like the the, the souls of the the dead members of the um, Crimson Lion Kings like fighting alongside her and like giving her strength. So I'm, I'm pretty I'm hoping all three of these guys survive. But if like Mary Leona doesn't survive, all three of the Vermilion siblings in this case, I hope they survive. But I don't expect Mary Leona to. If she died, she would go out like fighting with her boots on and everything like it well her her boots got burned off but you get the idea um <laughs> she went out fighting um protecting her kingdom protect you know fighting with her fallen comrades by her side and you know she, you know protecting Fergolion and Leopold so there's that <sighs> um Next up, we have another uh, Vermilion, but this is kind of a Vermilion Silva combo in this case. Uh, we have Mimosa, who is, of course, the younger sister of Krish. I can never pronounce his name, and it's been a while since I've heard it pronounced, so I'm sorry if I mispronounce his name. Um, so, Marilyn, or Mimosa, excuse me, Mimosa, lots of M's. Uh, Mimosa is, of course, the um, is one of the current members of the <laughs> um, Golden Dawn. That's one that's not named after an animal. Um, <laughs> not a squad named after an animal. Is part of the Golden Dawn. And she's, you know, fought alongside Yuno and everything like that. She's one of the ones that has, just like Noelle, has the crush on, you know, <laughs> Asta and everything. And her and her brother are not like 100% different, but he is much more on the flamboyant and flashy side. Um, but she does love him, but she also gets exceedingly annoyed with him at various points in time, which is reasonable. Um, if I had him for a brother, I would get very, very annoyed at him at various points in time as well. So that's not that surprising. Um, we know they both have, I believe they both have like plant type magic. And of course, Crush is the one who is, well, he's now the, pretty much the, the captain of, and was like the acting captain for the, um, Coral Peacocks under uh dorothy underwood and dorothy was you know in like her sleep mode for like a long time so he was the one who was basically in charge don't ask me why and then now dorothy's gonna go become like the the queen the new witch queen in the witch forest i guess uh so he'll probably get a promotion depending on how all of this goes um maybe he'll come out of this with like a couple of new flashy scars or something like that i don't know but I'm trying to remember what we saw Mimosa doing the last time. She more focuses on healing magic, but she does have some fairly high-powered attacks because she's got like that flower cannon thing that she can do. But I don't remember what Mimosa is currently doing at the moment. I don't remember if she's currently just acting as like a healing station for people or not. Uh, next up, back to the Black Bulls, we have Marie um, Adele, who is of course the younger sister of Gauche. And of course, Gauche is just creepily obsessed with his sister. Um, I don't get this trope in manga and anime. I don't get it, but it's there and whatever. Um, Marie is, of course, Gauche's younger sister. She is currently living with a um, uh, sister. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, sorry. Uh, but living at the orphanage and is being well taken care of there. Ghost spoils her rotten and will spend pretty much all of his money and everything that he earns while working at the Black Bulls. will spend that to buy Marie whatever the heck. And of course he is the gullible fool who whenever anybody in the store sees him coming, they're like, ooh, he's got the sister. We've, we've, we're gonna make some bank today. Um, and all of that. So there's, there's that. Um, uh, Gauche does love her and Marie does love him, but Marie also is like a little bit of like, the, okay, can you back away now? Um, at various points in time, whenever they're around each other and whenever he's just being too overprotective, um, and too in her business without just letting her be herself and be, you know, just, you know, exist without him breathing down her neck. Um, she, of course, she's one of the other ones that has the crush on Asta, as do several girls. Um, so there's that. Um, at least, at least Black Clover didn't turn into a harem anime. I'll at least give him that. Um, <laughs> um, I'll at least give him that, that Black Clover did not turn into a harem anime. Um, but like, you know, so we see a lot of that stuff with, um, you know, Marie and Gauche and, you know, he has, you know, put so much into trying to, you know, give her as good of a life as he can, um, which is admirable. <sighs> Next up, we have one that connects back to Marie and Gauche. We have Eclette 
and Drawa, Eklet and Drawa are the two um, elves that possess Marie and Ghosh, respectively. Um, Eklet is the one who has like the um, paralyzing type magic because the Drawa who reincarnates inside of Ghosh has the same type of power that he does where he can create mirrors. And then this might give us a clue as to like what type of magic Marie will have when she grows up because Eklat uh, has um, this kind of like, she can like look into the mirrors and then it like sends her power all over the place and she's able to like freeze people in place. So there might be, and they're related in any way. So it's like Marie having mirror magic later on once she's older would be probably pretty common to happen. Um, most of the time we've seen in families where they tend to have like similar powers like you know all of the you know all of the Ver, uh, vermilion children who are you know Fergulian and leopold and Merlino, you know, they all have um you know fire magic and then both mimosa and crush have like plant magic and everything um and uh nozelle and nebra and solid and uh, noel you know two of them have you know water magic and two of them have you know like steel magic so it's like that's kind of like you know family thing there where it's like well similar magic although in to regards for like the vermilion and stuff in regards to uh mimosa and crush i don't know how you take like metal and or water and um fire and you get plant but okay whatever um so um now eclat and draw are you know resting in the afterlife with the elves and everything so there's that uh, another black, uh, another black bull. We have Gray, and of course, Gray has her two stepsisters. Who, of course, Gray's backstory is, of course, based off of Cinderella. And I didn't really get to talk about Gray in the previous one. I think I talked about her in the Mother's Day one a little bit with like her stepmother, because as I said, her power, her, um, her story is based off of Cinderella because you know she's you know her father marries her stepmother and she has two stepsisters and she, you know she's treated like a servant and a slave in her own home and then eventually she you know activates her power gets her grimoire and she's able to physically make herself you know mimic someone else's appearance and she looks like one of her sisters and then of course her stepmother and stepsisters just ridicule her and like say you're just trying to mock us and then gray runs away um and we have no idea if she's seen her family since then. I wouldn't blame her if she hasn't. But we definitely have watched throughout the series as Grey has grown in self-confidence, which is amazing, and I love that. And of course, we know that she has the, the crush on Gauche, um, <laughs> which is just funny. Um, <laughs> she does not like her sisters. Gauche adores his. Um, but, you know, so there's, you know something there um i don't remember again at the current moment i believe most of the black bulls are being enhanced by asta's anti-magic to allow them to be able to fight against the paladins and i think gray's magic is being enhanced by that as well but since her magic is um illusion slash transformation magic um it will be very interesting to see how they end up applying that later on so and then of course we have gordon's sister who is roxanne uh Roxanne Agrippa. She seems to be his younger sister. We don't know that much about her, but hopefully they'll have a better relationship than they did before. Not that they seem to have a bad one. Gordon just was distant from his family. Um, she probably has poison magic like him, but we don't know. Um, that's about all the information we have about her. Uh, another black bull, last one on the list, or at least one of the black bulls on the list. I got a couple of others after this, but we have, uh, Ichika, who is of course the younger sister of Yamisuka Hiro. Um, we found about her a lot more recently in the manga and we haven't even hit that part in the anime yet. I'll hopefully we'll be maybe getting there soon. I don't know. Um, we know that Ichika is Yami's younger sister and that the, the main thing that we've seen for their interactions is... They seem to get along fine as kids, but then when everything happened with their father and their clan being slaughtered, Ichika is under the impression that it was Yami who did it, and then he leaves and then gets like washed away in the big storm and ends up, you know, in the Clover Kingdom, where he then just stays. <laughs> um, and then Ichika is kind of taken in and raised kind of in the palace and is like one of the, the guards slash friends of like the Emperor, basically. 
um, and, you know, grows up there. And she pretty much lives with this whole impression that her brother is the one who slaughtered their family, slaughtered their whole clan. She finds out much more recently that that's not the case at all. She also, like, hated her brother up until this point in time because of that reason. She finds that that's not the case. Jami wasn't the one that did it. It was her their father who drugged Ichika and then drugged her with, like, whatever the stimulant was that, like, upped her power. And then because she couldn't control it, she then slaughtered everybody else in their clan, and including their father. And then ended up, you know, blacking out. And when she came to, it was just her and Yami left. And I think it was Yami told her that he was the one that did it to protect her from knowing that she's, she was the culprit. Um, and then, you know, like he didn't want her living with that guilt. And he'd rather her hate him, I think, than her hate herself and think that she was, you know, this, this monster that did this. Um, I think that was kind of Yami's rationale behind it. It probably wasn't like that deep of thought for him because Yami doesn't have deep thoughts. Um, <laughs> but you now he's left alone for long periods of time. So maybe he has deep thoughts. I don't know. But, you know, he, he let her, you know, he took the blame so she wouldn't feel that she was the, the culprit, the, the, one, the one with their, their family's blood on her hands. And then, of course, you know, he left and she's raised. Um, in the palace and attained this, you know, this very high status um, within their country and is very strong herself. And now her and Yami are kind of being, I think they've been reunited. I think, I don't remember. Um, but we'll see what that ends up happening there. Um, uh, next up, we have Kahano in Kyoto. Kyoto. Uh, and they are, of course, the, uh, Kahano is, of course, the, uh, the seabed temple priestess that Asta and Noel end up meeting when they are up on the beach training for Noel's magic. So that way she can, um, you know, get the, the sea, um, it's this, the sea dragon's nest or something like that that she's able to, like, set up to be able to, so that way they can all, you know, go down into the, 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 uh, the strong magic zone that will take them down to the, the seabed temple. Um, and they meet Kahano and she's, you know, this beautiful singer and she's, you know, able to use her voice to like, she can use her voice to like enhance others to a degree and she can use her voice in order to, you know, enhance herself, but also to just, you know, a, you know, her, kind of like how Brook fights in One Piece a little bit where he can use his music to affect people's moods and affect people's um, stamina and such because he's put people to sleep before by playing his music. Kahano does the same thing. She can like, you know, rally people and bring them joy and Brooke can do the same thing in One Piece. And Kahano is very similar in that regard for like how she uses her music, um, that she uses it to, to touch people, to reach people. And, um, her and Kyoto, of course, you know, they're very close. You know, they both want to be performers. She wants to sing it. He wants to do his, you know, blade dancing and everything. And, you know, they befriend Asta and Noel and everything. And, of course, everything happens with the Seabed Temple. And, of course, you know, Kahano kind of loses her voice and he kind of loses his leg. And then, of course, that gets healed later on. And then, of course, um, you know, they... they get to perform at like the the festival in the in the clover kingdom and then uh more recently we've seen kahano when uh noel went to the seabed temple to allow her to claim leviathan because kahano found her and was like hey noel yeah can you come with me why um ancient deity woke up and wants to talk with you um <laughs> so that's basically what happened there now noel has a leviathan as her like like familiar type thing now um at least for a little while um we'll see how that goes um so that was the last time we saw kahano uh and uh kieto i believe he was there as well but that was the last time we saw them because they're not really involved in the fight right now i don't think they would be very useful against the paladins no offense i like them but i don't think they're that strong um but yeah uh, next up, we have Tetia Silvermillion Clover, who is, of course, the sister of Lemire Silvermillion Clover. <sighs> so, uh, Tetia is 
you know, this the, was the princess of the Clover Kingdom way back when. Her and Lumiere were, like, two of the princes and princesses of the kingdom. Um, Tatia, of course, ends up marrying uh, Lich, falling in love, marrying him, and they're going to have a child. And, of course, everything was peaceful until the royals from the Clover Kingdom attacked and just, just attacked the elves for no reason because they were manipulated. <sighs> um... Tetsia's soul hopefully went to rest in peace, and now she's got, you know, Lich there with her as well, along with her brother, so the three of them are reunited um, in whatever form of the afterlife there is, <laughs> so there's that. Um, we don't spend that much time with Tetsia, so we get to see her a little bit in the flashback, and that's about it. But we don't learn that much about her personality. She seems to be very open to wanting to be around the elves and helping the elves be able to be part of the society in the Clover Kingdom with the humans. But we don't really see anything else about her personality, unfortunately. She's not particularly major enough in the flashback to warrant that, I guess. We got two left. Next up, we have Rebecca Scarlet, who I like. She's just like this regular lady who ends up befriending Asta and she was originally like a date for Luck and Magma, uh, Magna and then she like met <laughs> Asta in the process and then she like likes Asta but like so she's like the oldest sister and she has like um she has Luca who is her who is a sister, Marco who is brother, Pem which is sister and then there's like a couple of others. Um, and she's like, she's the breadwinner of the family and she is one that is in charge of like taking care of raising all of her siblings. Um, <laughs> so, and like her siblings are friends with Marie because like they hang out together because like her siblings get to hang out with like the orphans and everything. Um, which I, I, I find that nice. The sister's like, yeah, it's fine. They can hang out with each other. It's fine. Um, <laughs> kids playing together. They're fine. But, like, Scarlet is, like, around and, you know, takes care of her siblings and everything like that. We don't know what happened to their parents. Assumedly, they're dead. <sighs> um, but she takes very good care of all of her siblings. Um, and then, well, I mean, by technicality in this setup, we also have for, um, I, I missed this earlier, but for the, like, the sister setup, there are, um, in regards to, like, Austin, you know, there are, like, the other kids that are at the church um, in Hodge Village. And those are, there's uh, Rekka, who's the girl, I think, and then there's Nash and Aru and Holo and stuff. So there's, I don't remember specifically, um, <laughs> specifically uh, which ones are which, but there's at least, like, one sister in there, and I think that's Rekka. And, um, she is, you know, she's, like, basically, like, you know, you know, Asta and you know's, you know, younger sister, basically, foster sister, and there's, like, other ones in there, and she helps take care of them. Um, so there's that. And then the last one on the list is Vanica. So, <laughs> uh, Vanica Zoigritz, who is the... I think she, is she the youngest out of all of them? I think she's the youngest out of all of the Zoigart siblings because there's Lucius, who is Julius in disguise. There's Dante, and then there's Xenon, who at the very least currently in the manga is dead. Uh, in the anime, I think he's still alive and still needs to have the rest of his knockdown, drag out fight with, I don't remember who, but whichever. Because um, I know he dies, if I remember correctly. Um, but Vanica is the one girl in that group. She has, I think her demon, is, her devil is Mercophobia, Mercophobia, something like that. Merci <coughs> Mercipho, something like that. It's like Mercury sounding, I don't remember. Um, she is, of course, the sister in that group. Her and her sibling, her and her two brothers, you know, overthrew um, Yuno's parents so many years ago and took over the Spade Kingdom and then um, you know, they had all made deals with devils, and she very much likes to just, like, torture her subordinates, but they seem to like it, so okay. And then she is the one who is responsible for Ossier's death because she gives Ossier the curse, and then that, you know, ends up leading to her death later on. And then she does the same thing with Lola Pechka, and of course, uh, Vanica is, of course, the one who ends up having the, is Noelle's knockdown drag out fight for this setup for the Spade Kingdom arc where they fight in the spade, spread against um, the Dark Triad siblings. Um, I, 
because it because it's I think it's um Vanica and Dante I think they both or is it Dante that dies I don't remember if it's, it's either Dante or uh, Xenon that dies one of the two dies and Noel manages to defeat Vanica and then the other one is defeated by um I don't remember off the top of my head Magna fights one of them and then. Is it Yuno fights the other because like Magnus fighting of course on Yami's behalf and then Yuno is fighting on um, Vengeance's behalf um, in order to avenge respectfully each of their captains but I don't remember which one's fighting which off the top of my head for the Dark Triad siblings with that beyond Vanica fighting against Noel. Um, but we know that you know Vanica is able or that you know Noel defeats Vanica um, and, you know, all that fun stuff there. Um, I don't think we've seen Vanica since the end of that fight beyond the confirmation that she was at least, like, captured and, like, no longer has her magic or something like that, I think was, um, the answer. Because I don't think she's dead. I think only one of them dies. But they could pop back up again, you know, Lucius is out there running around. He could pop up and, you know, free them or something like that. I don't know. Um... Well, that's what I have here for this list for the siblings um, for the sisters day I got one more day left for this and that's grandparents day and that'll be in September so I still got a little bit for that um, so I get to go to the zoo tomorrow yay <laughs> uh, thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a nice rest of your day bye